Father Stephen is the founder and pastor of St. Anne's Orthodox Church in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and writes the very popular blog, Glory to God for All Things. Father Stephen also wrote the book, Everywhere Present, Christianity in a One-Story Universe. So without further ado, I hope you'll enjoy this episode from my interview with Father Stephen Freeman. Interesting. I think um, the two, almost two opposite sides of the same coin. Uh, one is people who, uh, I guess both of them are an idealization of orthodoxy. Uh, one who look at it and think, this is too hard. You know, they look at the, they look at the fasting rules or, or someone gave them the so-called fasting rules. Uh, when I actually ask someone who thinks they know what the fasting rules are, uh, and they recite sort of what is commonly practiced in so-called strict parishes. No fish, no wine, no dairy, no olive oil, um, you know, uh, various things like that. Um, but that's not actually the fa- how the fast is stated. Uh, I know in uh, the rubrics that we use in the OCA, uh, which actually describes the monastic fast, which is the only one that's actually really ever described. And the truth is, is that's always mitigated. I don't know any parish that doesn't mitigate it because it includes like one meal a day. You know, I don't know priests who tell everybody in their parish that they can only eat one meal a day. You know, and so people who think they're keeping the fast strictly, well, they're not. You know, um, and so there's some who look and think it's uh, orthodoxy is too hard. And there's others, God help them, who love rules. Uh, and they're in as much danger as anybody. It's like they come to orthodoxy and think, oh boy, this place has got rules. And they get to be very good at fasting. And in a very short amount of time, you can have two types. Those who go through the fast and think, I'll never be orthodox, I can barely make it. And those who go through the fast thinking, this is the best thing that happened. And mostly what they will come out with is an ability to judge others who can't handle it. When in fact, both of them are just describing aspects of their personality, nothing that has to do with orthodoxy. And so the first thing, for instance, that I teach with that, with inquirers, is that um, I won't let any inquirer or even any catechumen, and other priests treat this differently. This is just my practice. Uh, I won't let any of them keep the fast strictly, whether they're lousy at it or whether they would be good at it. But what I want them to do is to keep the fast uh, as I told them to. But what they need to learn is that we're fasting as a community and that whatever your priest blesses, do that and you'll be better off. And so for some are sort of chomping at the bit because I'm not letting them fast as strictly as they want. But I'm afraid they might keep the so-called fast of demons in which you eat nothing, but neither do you pray as it's the so-called fast of demons. The others, uh, I don't want them to lose heart. Mostly I tell them that when you come to Pascha and you hear the sermon of St. John Chrysostom read and he talks to the heedless and to the others, I said, if if the sermon of St. John Chrysostom is not good news to you at Pascha, then you have not kept a good Lent. You know, and so, you know, even if you failed throughout Lent, there's good news for you at Pascha. You know, so that's, that's not the worst thing. In fact, I, I really hope for all of my catechumens that they reach a level of failure at some point in Lent. That will be good for them. Because they need to because that's something to learn, because you're going to fail at some point. And it's, it's the falling and getting up again that you have to learn. Um, it's not learning how not to fall, it's learning how to get up again. And so you have to take that with each one. And so the the greatest pitfalls um, for Orthodox, either that you mistakenly think that you can't do it, um, or that you mistakenly think that you can. Um, when what you want to know is, you were created for this. Orthodoxy is not some Byzantine invention. Uh, orthodoxy is the gift of God to man, and it was created for you. You'll not only learn If you properly live the orthodox life with proper direction, you will actually also learn what it is to truly be a human being. Jesus was not only fully God, 
He was fully man, the only fully man. And so this life teaches us what it is to become fully and truly human. And, and this is a good thing. Um, the obstacles are trying to be more than human or to think you're less than. Hi again. I hope you enjoyed this episode from my interview with Father Stephen Freeman. Please subscribe to get notified when new videos become available, which happens every Friday. And if you would, please comment below to let me know what you thought of this video. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Friday.